Hello everybody. I'm Mrs. Annie Beach, founder and leader of the Jam Pack Blues and Grass Neighborhood Band in Chandler, Arizona. And I'm thrilled today in spite of quarantine and everything that I have two of our wonderful musicians, one on either side of me. And we are going to have a little fireside chat for you. This is Arizona and we don't have a fireplace. <laughs> and especially it's 112 out right now. And the sun is the but fireplace. But we have, where's our lantern, boys? Uh, I've got to have our lantern. It's, in, it's inside. Is it inside? Yeah. It's in better sight now. Because today we want to let our light shine for you and make you happy. That's our purpose in Jam Pack. So this is Carlos on one side. Hi, everybody. And Alan right here. Hi. Great. And our first song that we're going to do for you will be one of our most favorite songs. We call it the Circle Song. And it's really a fusion between Johnny Cash's Daddy Sang Bass and Will the Circle Be Unbroken. And sing along with us if you want to, okay? Okay. Ah, indeed. 
you know, and in this place, we hope that this circle will never be unbroken. Back in 1994, never knowing what would happen, Mr. Beach and I started this little band here in our house where it still is, still extremely crowded, little tiny place with lots and lots of people and most of all, a whole lot of love. Everybody's welcome, there's no additions. Uh, like we like to say, no rules, but everybody knows what to do. And we have made wonderful music all these years and hope to continue to do that. And today, I would like our boys here, they're actually not so boys anymore, 28? 28. 28, and Alan's almost 18. I'm the oldest one, by the way. I'm, <laughs> I'm 76. So all of you have heard of my 25-year plan. That's the reason I've got to have one. I've got to see these guys all the way through. So I'm going to ask Carlos to start out because something very critical happened in our band life in 2010. Those of you who remember uh, the laws that were passed, um, anti-immigration laws, uh, 1070 became law in Arizona and we had to we had to step out and fight and our band did just that. Carlos tell us something about your story. Well I had a bit of a crossroads 2010 which was 10 years ago yeah. 10 years ago where I was very insecure very unsure as to what my future had in store and I even have a little little article here there you go. Yeah, Mrs. Beach and I, that's me, that's Mrs. Beach, looking up. Look at that. <laughs> really cute picture. And the, the title here is very interesting to me. You know, this is from 10 years ago, as I was saying, from September 4th, 2010. And the title is A Valedictorian's Plea to Approve the Dream Act. Okay? And I'm going to read a little just about the second half of this. Okay? So it starts, I was born in Zacatecas, Mexico. My parents introduced me to the United States when I was a few months old. I have lived here for more than 18 years. I am American. I don't know what Mexico even looks like. I need the freedom to become a contributing member of society. No one in my immediate or extended family has gone to college, and it would be the highest honor to be the first. I would like nothing more than to major in health or law or the health of law, you know? The demand in healthcare fields continue to grow because of healthcare reform and aging baby boomers. You know, <laughs> all the baby boomers, is that you? I'm even older than that. Yeah? <laughs> okay, so. Or perhaps major in law and help assist low-income Latino families with similar situations to mine. The DREAM Act proposed legislation that would offer citizenship to qualified high school graduates. That might be my only hope. I have a lot to offer to my country. I only ask for an equal opportunity to test my dreams and fulfill my story. My legal status was not a choice. This government created for the people must listen to the voice of 65,000, if not more, hardworking, undocumented high school students graduating every year a voice that will ultimately contribute to our country's economy and fulfill one of the important tenets of our democracy and justice for all. And that was, you know, that was a different part of my life because I was, I was pleading for people to help me out. And I felt like I was powerless at that time, but that gave me time, just like we have today because of COVID and because of the pause in our economy and society to to analyze ourselves, our own lives. You know, I analyze my religion, I analyze government as a whole, and I realized that my path was to go in a different direction. You know, the, the road less traveled than to actually travel more. And I feel great. If I can talk to myself uh, 10 years ago, I would tell myself to just go, you know, just <laughs> go travel wherever the winds take you. Don't be afraid. You don't have to do what anybody else is doing. Just do what your heart tells you to do, and if it's music, if it's gardening, if it's being organic or living in a new way, and 
living in new types of homes, ashrams, uh, community uh, style native pueblos, do it. You know, so everything's gonna be all right, even if we don't take the path that everybody takes. You know, so that was my crossroads. Yeah, that was a big crossroads. Mm -hmm. And we marched and I went to Washington DC with this little yep. packet I'd made up for him. Yeah. And we did all, all that we could. And in the end, two, 2012, 2012, yes, we did get the DREAM Act and he was one of the first to get on it. Mm -hmm. So he, he was at least safe mm -hmm. for the time being. Yeah. And, but he chose because college was extremely expensive, still is. Mm -hmm. And he has chosen to be a traveler and a musician and a volunteer. Mm -hmm. And I'm extremely proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> and all Thank you've you. done. Yeah. Thank you, Carlos, for yeah. sharing all that. We're all very, bl very blessed, you know, and this is actually a, so this is a packet with many different stories. It starts with uh, your letter. You know, you wrote, you wrote, wrote a letter mm -hmm. in my behalf that tells my story and it's pretty much asking for help, you know, from yeah. anybody that was willing to help. And mm -hmm. I did have a lot of help from the, from teachers and uh, other band members. So I was never alone in this. I have my story in here. I have uh, accomplishments, my valedictorian speech, picture, pictures with the boys right here. <laughs> you know, this is the real deal. Your Cisco, Neil. <laughs> And where am I? I don't think I'm even in there. Oh, is that me? You're there. I'm in there. Oh, I'm back here. Yeah, playing the bass. You know, my folks are there. You know, they were big help here. The White Dove being released for Mr. Beach's uh, his, uh, his burial. So, yeah, this is pretty much a collage of my life. And it's been a wild journey. It's been different. I don't know anybody with a similar story to me, but I'm sure lots of people are out there doing similar things. So, yeah, we got your back. Thank you. And you, you've made music with us all along, and that's, you know, and spreading the word of what we do. Mm -hmm. That's great. Spreading okay, Alan. Well, I started Jam Pack uh, 10 years ago, so 2010 when you know, he yeah. was struggling with his all dream act stuff. <laughs> and yeah, when I first came, uh, he was actually uh, one of my first teachers to you know, learn guitar. And you know, he's been helping me out ever since. Yeah, and just the first joint jam pack, it was, I thought it was a little weird. It was a little bit by accident. <laughs> just, uh, I was sitting outside waiting for my brother to get out of jam pack, and she came out and realized, like, you know, Arizona, 112 Hot. degree out, outside. <laughs> and I'm a seven-year-old outside sitting in the heat waiting for my brother. And she asked me to come in and just asked me, like, is there any instrument you want to try? And, you know, immediately I just said guitar because that was the only instrument I recognized. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and ever since I've uh, fallen in love with the guitar and happy to be here, happy to play, happy to spread the joy of music and you know, make people happy with our music. And now you're actually uh, the band leader, really. You, you help organize the music and the children and teach them and I mean what a what a legacy 10 years and there are others there are others like that in this band um, yes. they stay why did you stay um it makes you feel good makes you feel good it's fun you know it's just nice to you know pass the tradition of music down to the young generation because uh, a lot of younger kids are not into it as much as it should be. It does change lives, doesn't it? Yeah. It certainly changed mine. That's, you know, that was my crossroads in 1994. Mm -hmm. And I never laid it down. And we're going to, we're going to sing a final song in a minute. But I would like to encourage people to re-examine what we do with our lives. This is a great time to do it because we're kind of in our house and we don't have a lot of other things to do to say, what is my purpose? What's my goal? What am I doing here? What can I do to really contribute? Like in our little book we wrote um, from Miss Debbie's funeral mm -hmm. where they talk about 90 year olds. I'm not there yet. 
90 year olds, when they asked them, what would you do differently in your life? They said they would risk more. Mm -hmm. What was the other stuff? Reflect. Reflect more and contribute more. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage people, you don't have to do big, mm -hmm. but open your home and especially to musicians and young musicians and people that want to try to be musicians because making music together is life changing. There's no doubt about it. And we will find peace through our music. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Igor, the jazz cowboy, mm -hmm. wrote this song in 2010 in support of Carlos. Mm -hmm. And it's called Standing on the Side of Love. And that was indeed the uh, theme from his church, which happens to be Universal Unitarian, Unitarian or something. Unicorn. You, not <laughs> Unicorn. Like sort of like Unicorn. Like but standing on the side of love. And it's so appropriate for today. So we're going to do our best shot at it. We haven't sung it for a while, but it really fits today. Yeah. Standing on the side of love. Will you be standing on the side of love? Who will stand with me and Jesus standing on the side of love? Very powerful verses. Mm -hmm. May I say something before we start? Yes. I want, to, I want to give you a personal shout out, Igor. Thank you so much. You know, you're one of the most interesting characters that I've ever <laughs> met. You know, he literally looks like Santa Claus. He wears like spurs and all kinds of yeah. musical <laughs> instruments all over his body. And I'm a songwriter and I've written know many songs and many songs have written me but nobody has actually ever wrote a song for me and this is really cool you know because it's from the heart it's very you know Dylan-esque you know folksy and it's for the times today so thank you Eva. Got them in my heart. All right. Are we ready? Yeah. In A? Okay. Can you do a little kick on? So I don't know him. I have never seen this man before. Some folks I could not see so weak and choose till they heard a knock and on their door. Standing on the side of love, will you be standing on the side? Oh, 
standing on that side of the Who will stand with me and Jesus standing on that side of love? Oh, all right. Powerful, powerful stuff. All the Bibles, all the Korans, all of whatever mm -hmm. out there. Standing on the side of love is what says it all. Mm -hmm. Don't let doctrine get in your way. Don't let anything get in your way. Please, please, to have world peace, to have peace in our homes, in our communities, stand on the side of love. Mm -hmm. Think of that. Yeah. And then so when we're standing there, we might want to dance a little bit. There we you know? go. Then it sounds like, get up, stand up, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stand up for your man. All right, folks, we're sending our love out, out over Zoom. What a fabulous platform we have right now. And so we've used it. This is our fireside chat. Where'd my lantern go? Okay. We're going to let our little light shine everywhere and definitely stand on the side of love and keep that in our hearts yes. thank you everybody may i say something one more time one, one more time, one more time. <laughs> you asked alan why he's still here this is why i'm still here you know yeah, because right. this is world peace to me you know this is the seed to world peace that i've never seen anywhere else i don't know who anybody around the world doing this if people are doing this around the world please reach out to us tell us know? Yes. Yeah, let us know because this is, you know, this is the answer. And people are going to feel that wave. It's already starting now. It's little ripples, but this little tiny little fire can spread into a whole forest fire. So that's Amen. why I'm here. You know? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Preach yeah, it, boy. Preach it. <laughs> preach to the beach. <laughs> all right. Is that it? That's it. I'm sorry. Is that it? You no, today. you're all okay. right. Good. I'm glad you did. Huh? Okay. Stay the course. All right. Thank you, everybody. Love you. Good night. Bye.